Tonight, Tonight is the University High School Junior ROTC Senior Recognition Night. We will be giving the cadets name, the years in the Junior ROTC, who they're escorted by, and their post high school plans. Starting off with Shelly Montez, second year cadet, mother Maria Montez, father Edgar Montez, plans are to join the military and then be a politician. Next, Brenda Salazar, second year cadet, mother Marcella Salazar, father Antonio Salazar, attending college in New York and becoming a real estate agent. Next, Ruben Solis, second year cadet, mother Elizabeth Solis, father Dario Solis, attending Tarleton State University and majoring in business. Next, Ariana Gonzalez, third year cadet, mother Rose Valdez, father Brandon Vasquez, attending the police academy and working in criminal justice. Destiny Huerta, third year cadet, mother Angelina Sardinetta, father David Huerta, attending college and majoring in graphic design. Next, Xavier Tijana, Third year cadet, mother Maribel Salazar, stepfather Robert Salinas, attending Texas A&M, majoring in civil engineering. Next, Ashley Acosta, fourth year cadet, mother Juana Santa Maria, father Abel Acosta, joining the U.S. Army, then attending Baylor University. Next, Michael Benavides. Fourth year cadet, mother Patricia Frazier Guajardo, father Pedro Guajardo III, attending UT Arlington, majoring in architectural design. Next, Oswaldo Castellan, fourth year cadet, mother Ruby Sabellos, father S Simon Castellan, attending MCC and a degree in digital marketing. Next, Lorenz DuBose, fourth year cadet. Teacher Rachel Curry, counselor LaRonda Clark, attending a U.S. military academy and becoming a military officer. Next, Andreas Lueno Vila, fourth year cadet. Mother Brenda Vila. Father Jose Lueno, attending Rice University and majoring in mechanical engineering. Next, Alejandro Martinez, fourth year cadet, Father Sergio Martinez, joining the Army. Next, Emmanuel Ogwin, fourth year cadet, Sister Galilea Ogwin, joining the U.S. Marine Corps. Next, Catherine Madonna Quez, fourth year cadet, Mother. Ros Rosalia Madonna, 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 Father Eloy Madonna, Madonna joining, joining the U.S. Navy. Next, Next Josie Beltran, fourth year cadet, mother Emma Beltran, father Octavio Gonzalez, attending West Virginia University, majoring in forensic science. Give these junior ROTC seniors a hand wish them wish luck, them luck on their journey to their plans in the future. Congratulations.
Hello, football fans, and welcome to Waco ISD Stadium for another exciting night of Texas high school football. Tonight, the University Trojans host the Elgin Wildcats. I'm Lark Smith, along with Hal Harris and our statistician Paul Comer, to bring you this division or district 11 5a division 2 contest these two teams fighting for position for the postseason as chaparral comes in with a record or excuse me elgin comes in with a record of three wins four losses they're one and two in district play university trojans are four and two on the season and one and one in district competition the trojans are coming off of their a loss to Pflugerville by a score of 30 to 26, a game that Pflugerville took in the last minute of the game. Trojans had a chance to come back, but ball was intercepted on their comeback attempt. Meanwhile, the Elgin Wildcats have lost two in a row, losing to Belton 45 to 16 and to Chaparral 42 to 26. If you want to look at recent op opposing teams, the Trojans beat Chaparral 28 to 21, while Elgin lost to Chaparral 42 to 26. So I don't know exactly if that will translate for you, Hal, or if it just tells you it's another night of football in Texas. You know, universities had some very competitive games. Every district game being competitive. They're 4 and 0 at home, and they're 0 and 2 on the road. So they look to uh, secure that fifth victory tonight. The Junior ROTC presenting the colors at midfield. So let's join the stadium announcer, George Snookhouse. We'll have the colors presented by a young man playing with the guitar tonight. Members of the color guard are Commander Dennis Salinas, Texas flag Victoria Martinez, Rifles Juan Morris and Julius Cross. Junior ROTC instructors are Army Sarge, Instructor Sergeant First Class Marcus Hainer and Chief Warrant Officer Matthew Francis. Again, the national anthem will be played at midfield. Kind of expecting him to break into Foxy Lady after that. <laughs> Son of Jenny Hendricks. That should be the name of his group. Outstanding job with the national anthem tonight. Captain's getting ready to meet at midfield. 
For the Trojans, Joaquin Martinez along with London Smith, as well as Kai Hender or Micah Henderson. And number 54 is Michael Wells. Captains for the Elgin Wildcats, Nathan Lewis, number one. Number 55 is Dennis Levine, number 28. And number 50. Elgin uh, has won the, won the call, call, call and is elected, elected to receive. receive. Elgin will take the football to start the game. Hell, is that a 28 or a 29? If it's 28, we don't have a 28. I think that's a 29. Okay. Well, that would be Jackson Cloudus. So that means the Trojans will have the selection at the start of the third quarter. Elgin Wildcats under the head coaching of Heath Clausen. His third season in Elgin, 10 wins, 18 losses in his time there. It's his sixth season overall as a head coach. He started out at Louise where he was 10 and 23, so a 20 and 41 record for the head coach for the Elgin Wildcats. Ron Johnson is the first year head coach for the University of Trojans, his first foray as a head coach after being the defensive coordinator at Midway. Four and two now on his young coaching ledger. Clark, we got Gary Jefferson, number 14, along with number 17, Jalen Owens. Back deep for Elgin, along with number five, Zaire Newells. Kicking off for University will be Adrian Monreal. Both teams are purple and white. The Trojans wearing their, actually they're wearing their black uniform tops with white pants. Elgin Wildcats in all white. Montreal pops it up toward the near side and pops it all the way down to the 10 yard line where it's taken in by Zaire Newell and he's gonna be knocked down before he can get back to the 20 yard line. Amani, Amani Franklin in on the tackle. You'll probably say that a lot tonight. I will be saying that a lot. Well, they're going to start at their own 17-yard line. Quarterback for Elgin is Nathan Lewis. He'll have Darren Harper in as his running back. He has wide receivers of Blake Courtney, Gary Jefferson, Jalen Owens, and Zaire Newells. The center is Obadiah Halliburton. The guards, Adrian Beckett, Joaquin Rodriguez, the tackles, Hunter Gibson and Joseph Stiggers. We got a flag on the first snap. That's usually a procedure call. I think possibly DQ Irwin might have been offsides. Defense, offside. You are correct, five sir. Yards. First snap. So we get five yards on it, brings up a first and five and runs it up to the 22 yard line. Our officiating crew out of the Waco chapter, Brad Strickland is our referee. The umpire is Scott Hamby. The head linesman, Rhett Williams. The line judge is Eric Reinhardt. Field judge, Jarrell Proctor. Side judge, Bryce Powers. And the back judge is Brian Thomas. Second, a first and five, the keeper by the quarterback, Nathan Lewis, will get the first down as he appears to be a very tough guy to bring down. Number 21, Armani Franklin in on the tackle finally. Lewis is their uh, best running back, even though he is their quarterback. He gets it all the way out to the 34 yard line. It's a gain of 12 on the play and a first down. Lewis came in as possibly their top rusher. 467 yards on 83 carries. Hands the ball off this time. Up to about the 41 yard line goes Darren Harper. Justin Neal and Micah Henderson wrapping them up. 
Pick up a seven on the play, brings up a second down and three. Up front for University, we got DQ Irwin at the nose guard position. Justin Neal, the left defensive end. Again, hand off to Harper. Harper tries to back his way up to the first down marker. Joaquin Martinez in on the tackle. Right defensive tackle for right defensive end for University B. Cameron Kendall. The uh, linebackers will be number 21, Armani Franklin, number zero, Joaquin Martinez, and number 16, Joseph Caballero. Harper picked up the three yards for the first down. It's at the Wildcat 44 yard line. So far, nothing fancy from the Wildcats yet. Again, Fake the handoff to Harper, back to throw is Lewis, rolling on from under pressure out into the open, and now he slides with the slide beginning at the 43 in university territory and picks up another first down. That's what Coach Johnson talked about this. Uh, Lewis is a very fast, elusive runner. If the pass play breaks down, he'll take off. Picked up 13 yards on the play. What anybody to throw to, so he just decided to tuck it and run, and he is definitely a threat when he runs with the football. Again, fake the handoff. Lewis has it, and he's into the open to the 25 to the 20, and he'll make it into the end zone for the touchdown from 43 yards out. Great play flake there. Faked it to his tailback, number 21. Pulled it back out. Darren Harper. That is the ninth touchdown run of the year for the quarterback, Nathan Lewis. Wildcats get on the board with their first possession. Peyton Moss to try the extra point. The holder will be Nathan Lewis. And that extra point is good. Nine minutes, 28 seconds. Left to go in the first quarter. Elgin draws first blood. Going 83 yards in just five plays. And took two minutes and 32 seconds to get on the scoreboard. Well, Coach Johnson wanted his team to get off to a quick start, and that's, that wasn't the quick start he was hoping for. He was hoping his defense would hold them and then get that ball into their offense. University does come in, though, with the uh, second leading passer in the district. They have the leading rusher and the leading receiver in district play, so they have plenty of offense for tonight's ball game. Going deep to receive this kickoff will be number two, Braden Gallahar, along with number 15, Carlos Perez. will be back at about their 10-yard line. Now, what we saw of their kicker during warm-ups He'll probably put this in the end zone because that north wind that we began the game with at about 15 miles per hour is down to about 5 to 10 now. He will be kicking into the teeth of the wind here. And the game time temperature is 77 degrees. Relative humidity of 32%. Just another outstanding night for football in the central Texas. Moss paces it off. It toward the far sideline, taken at the four yard line, brought up the far sideline and finally taken out of bounds at about the 24 yard line. Number 11, Daniel Mamba, forcing him out of bounds. Decent return for Carlos Perez. Here come the Trojan offense, led by their quarterback, Cade Bynum. Darius Evans is his running back, wide receivers in London Smith, Jaden Guerrero, Braden Gallahar, and Joseph Foster. The center is Enrique Rangel, the guards, Carlo Navarro and Michael Willis, the tackles, Gilberto Dowling and Sebastian Cervantes. Take the handoff. Bynum keeps, has it up to the 29. 
Knocked down by Omar Palacios, number 12. Picked up five yards on the play. Is this going to be the war of quarterbacks? Trojans quickly up to the line of scrimmage. Now wait for the play from the sideline. Adam hands it off to Ladarius Evans, and Evans gets through a couple of arm tackles and spins his way up to the 31 for a gain of two. Brought down by Xavier Pension, number 18. The sideline, they're up to the line quickly, but looking to the sideline. London Smith is the wide receiver by himself at the bottom of the screen. He's a go-to guy in third down situations. Not necessarily a passing down there, ho, uh, here at third down and two. Wide receiver screen is dropped into the hands of Galahar, but he just could not hold on to it. You see the pass in the flat. Galahar just looks up field to run before he actually catches the ball. Jalen Owens will be back for Elgin at his own 25-yard line. Monreal will be punting for University. Good snap. Monreal gets it off without much of a rush. Takes a University roll. Inside the 30-yard line, that's where the Wildcats will get the ball for the second time with 7.56 left to go in the first quarter, and they have the lead at 7-0. 39 yards for Monreal on the punt. Mark it at the 30. The defensive secondary for University be Jawan Harris, number three, number four, Micah Henderson, number 19, C.J. Anderson. Harper takes the handoff, goes over left guard, takes it for five yards up to the 35-yard line. Camarion Kendall, 20, in on the tackle along with Justin Neal. So far, nothing fancy from the Wildcats. Look to throw in the flat now, tucks it and throws, and it's going to be complete just shy of the 40 yard line. Zaire Newell's making the catch there. Picked up four on the play. Third and one at the 39. Lone receiver to the near side is Blake Thames. The handoff though to Harper. He's got plenty of room for the first down up to the 42 yard line. Tripped up by Franklin number 21 for University, but not before he gets that first down. That is their fourth first down of this first quarter. We've got uh, Eric Grooms in at uh, defensive nose guard. I have not seen uh, Edgar Marquez in the game tonight. On the keeper, Lewis takes it up to the 45. Joaquin Martinez on the tackle. Okay, here comes Edgar Marquez in the game. It's coming in for uh, Grooms. He's second and seven from the 45. Lewis looking to pass, going down the far sideline. Just a little underthrown, a nice adjustment made there by his receiver, Blake Courtney, to make the catch at the 21 yard line. Little underthrown, but Courtney able to get to it. Travion DeGreat was right there with him. That's a 34-yard pitch and catch. We have a flag on play. Apparently, we got procedure maybe against the Wildcats Offense. here. Offense, number five, five-yard penalty, first down. So it'd be first and 15, back at the 26.
Richard Lucero is the offensive coordinator for the Wildcats. Signals in the play from the far side. Give the ball to Harper. Harper trying to get around the left side. It's going to be turned back inside. That's a good defensive play by Am Amani Franklin to at least turn that in. Yeah, Cameron Kendall also aided in on that tackle. They'll take it back to the 27-yard line. It's a loss of one on the play. Yeah, that's a big running back. He's 6'1", 208 pounds. First negative play that I can remember for the Wildcats in the game so far. Lewis suggesting the play. There's a man in motion. Looking to pass to his left, looks back right, throws underneath it. It's complete to Jefferson. And I'm not so sure there wasn't an illegal receiver downfield. 68 I, was right there with him. I agree with you. Micah Henderson pushing him out of bounds. Get it down to the 21-yard line for a gain of six. Brings up third down and 10. Well, they're definitely in field goal range should the uh, university hold them on this third down play. Yeah, we watch Moss in warm-ups. Anytime they're within the 30 and the 40, they're going to probably attempt a field goal. Harper trying to get up the middle is going to be turned away for no gain at the 21. Edgar Marquez on the tackle, number nine, the nose guard. Got to force a field goal. Peyton Moss will be coming in here to try this attempt from. Be a 38 yard attempt, which is well within his range. Even against the wind, and the wind's continuing to die down. Blake Thames is the deep snapper. Lewis doing the holding. Kick is good. 4-12 left to go. First quarter, the Wildcats have scored on their first two possessions to extend their lead to 10 to nothing over the University Trojans. Well, it's going to be up to the university now to answer that. They've got to get a score on this drive. Especially when they have, you know, the win with them here in the first quarter. Going deep for university will be Braden Gallahar, along with Carlos Perez. They moved 49 yards and eight plays to set up that 38 yard field goal. Took three minutes and 44 seconds to get on the scoreboard for the second time here in the first quarter. But coming from behind seems to be a specialty for the University Trojans this year. Well, that's what he was trying to avoid to start this ball game. He'd like to get up in front of these teams. It's a lot easier to play when you're in the lead than when we're having to press from behind. They do do the onside kick. And coming up with it for University is Edwin Eccles. They retreated as if they were going to set up for the kickoff. And then all of a sudden, Moss turned back around and tried the onside kick. But Eccles was up to the challenge. Heads up play. Plus, they also had offsides on the kicking team. Offside. So they'll decline that kicking for sure. Team. Five yards from the end of the run. First down. It's nice when you can add that to the end of the run. That'll take it down to the 34 yard line. University has great field position here in Wildcat territory. Golden chance here to reduce that lead. Well, if your top receiver's at the bottom of the screen, that's London Smith. Trojans seem to believe they don't have enough folks out there on the field. Hynum has them up to the line of scrimmage. 
keeps it. Now throws in the flat to London Smith. London Smith gets a couple of blocks from wide receivers and will take it down to about the 28-yard line before he's turned away. Initially brought down by Traverian Wright, number 24. Of course, he was aided by three or four more of his buddies to finally bring London to a stop. Picked up six yards on the play. That's a new wrinkle. We hadn't seen that one this year. Got three receivers to the left this time. With a tight end to the right of the formation. Evans the running back. Lots of time for Bynum. Now he has to get rid of the football. And is going to be good for the completion down the 11-yard line. Outstanding catch. 15. Carlos Perez caught that ball, Lark. Looked like he was just trying to throw that away, but it was a kind of a dying quail that fell in the arms of Perez. Now at the 11, a pickup of 17 on the play and a first down. London Smith's got double coverage on him down here on the far right end. Eccles the wing back. They send Evans in motion, and on the quarterback draw, there goes Bynum into the end zone for the touchdown from 11 yards out. Excellent response by University there on that on that drive to uh, cut into that lead immediately. Well, he took advantage of the botched onside kick that Eccles was so on top of to recover. The Trojans within three points after this extra point attempt. Adrian Monreal will be kicking the ball. So all Nichols will be holding. Kick is good. Three minutes and seven seconds to go first quarter and our new score is Elgin 10 and University seven as the Trojans score at the end of a three-play drive on this 11-yard run by their quarterback, Cade Bynum. Well, it took him three plays to cover that 34 yards in a minute and five seconds. Good teams will always take advantage of uh, gifts given to them, you know, especially inside the opposing's 50-yard line to start their offensive series. That's one of those goals that are normally up on the goal board in the locker room. Is when you have that opportunity, you've got to score. Next week, the Elgin Wildcats will be at home against Pflugerville. They still have their open date ahead of them. They'll finish off against the district leader, Rouse. On November the 2nd, the University Trojans, meanwhile, have three games left on the schedule. They have to go to Rouse next week before hosting Pflugerville Conley for their final home game, and then they'll finish off at Belton, who was considered the district favorite to start the year. Montreal with the approach, pops it up to the near side, taken in by Bailey. Bailey will take it across the 35 up to the 37 yard line. Joseph Caballero on the tackle. Number 16 for University. Uh, Trojan defense looking to get a stop here. As the Wildcats have scored the two times that their offense has got the ball. One touchdown, one field goal. Elijah Chairs has come in at the left defensive end spot for University. Curtis McFall McFarlane has checked in as the running back in the backfield for the Wildcats. Pass in the flat. That's complete to Jalen Owens, and Owens is going to be run out of bounds when he gets to the 41-yard line. Plus four on the play. He's up second down and six. Devontae Kirkland. Pushing him out of bounds after a short game. 
Now Gary Jefferson in as the running back. Again, back to pass. All kinds of time for Lewis. Fires it across the middle and it's picked off. Headed the other way for the University Trojans is Devontae Kirkland with the interception. There is a flag on the play. Let's see what the meaning of the hanky is back at the 40. Well, Kirkland just stepped in front Outside. of this one. Defense, number ah. 10, five yards penalty. Unfortunately, it's Second all for naught. Costly mistake there. Edgar Marquez is coming in. And DQ Earl will be coming out of the ball game. They'll bring up a third and one after the walk-off. Which should take it down to the 46-yard line. Waiting for the officiating crew to Walk this one off. Well, that's a big turnaround there. Trojans could have had the ball deep in enemy territory to possibly take the lead, but instead the Wildcats have a chance to pick up the first down. Lewis will run straight ahead behind his running back and pick up that first down up at the 48-yard line. Kamari and Kendall on the immediate tackle, but not before he got that first down. Lewis now has carried the ball five times for 74 yards. That includes that 41-yard touchdown run. New set of downs for the Wildcats. Bring the Riker to the near side. That's Zaire Newells. Once again, Lewis trying to run with the football. He may be dropped for a yard loss back at the 47-yard line. Joseph Cavallero in on the tackle. It didn't get fooled at all on that play. Got Chairs, Marquez, and Kendall in that University High defensive line. They hand the ball off to Jefferson, and Jefferson's tripped up before he can get going very well. Cameron Kendall, the great play there, coming from his right defensive end spot. They'll give him a gain of a yard to the 48. So it brings up third down and 10. They show a full house backfield, but that doesn't mean they're running with the football, not unless they're going to be blocking for Lewis. Lewis will roll to his left, looking downfield. Will be sacked before he can get rid of the football. Football appears to be loose, but Lewis is able to get back on top of it. With that nice rush and penetration, it allowed Joseph Caballero to come in from backside and, and nail him to the turf. Great effort there by that defensive line then. Lost another yard on the play, so it'd be fourth and 11. Back for, back for the university is Jawan Harris, number three, but they may let the clock play out this first quarter. Well, it's at five seconds. They'll Punt the ball with what used to be a 15 mile an hour wind at the back, but the flags indicate that that wind has died down totally. And that is the end of the first quarter. And our score is Elgin 10 and University 7. Now this special presentation. First of all, we have Cleo Kirkland III. Cleo Kirkland is a 1997 graduate of University High School and acting president of Southern Panthers Youth Football and Chair Organization. Upon graduation, Cleo was awarded a football scholarship to Howard Payne University, where he played defensive back. Cleo received his bachelor's degree in sociology and a minor in psychology. 
He is active in the community by working with food for families and having a mentor group known as the Normont Academy. He also serves in back-to-school drives and large number of community service projects. Cleo and his wife, Victoria, have three sons, K-Man, Trey Kirkland, Devontae C. Kirkland, and Davion C. Kirkland. Waco ISD thanks Mr. Kirkland for all he does for Waco ISD and the youth of Waco. Next, we have Matt Horton. He is a 2005 alumni of Angelo State University. Him and his wife, Katie, moved to Waco after college and made his community their home. They have two teenage boys. Matt became a Bush's Chicken franchisee 16 years ago and has been serving the best fried chicken in town ever since. He is focused on serving his community and is proud to be a supporter of University High School. There are athletics and all students. Matt has hired hundreds of university Trojans looking to find their first job throughout his career and will continue that tradition. You will see him in the concession stands on game nights serving the fans and rooting on the University High Trojans to a win. Go Trojans! Congratulations to Cleo Kirkland III and Matt Harden. Honors there. So Moss back to punt. On fourth and 11 from his 47. Snaps a little high, but not much of a rush. Punt's going to hit near the 20 yard line, or at least roll down to near the 20 yard line. That's where University will get the ball with 11 minutes and 47 seconds left to go in the first half of play. 33 yards on the punt by Peyton Moss. Trojans are going to have to go 79 yards, see if they can capture a lead before halftime here. Bynum sends a man in motion, but hands it off to his running back, Evans. Ladarius Evans, with some good hard nose running, gets it up to the 28 yard line for a gain of seven. Jaden uh, Zo on the tackle, along with Jackson Cloudus. Second and three. Evans once again has the football around the left side and has the first down as he gets it out to the 35. Brought down by the cornerback, Omar Palacios. Picked up eight on the play to pick up the first down. Looking to the sideline for the play from offensive coordinator Thomas Draper. On the option, they throw to the motion man. Trying to get free is Miguel Nunez. I'm sorry, that's the wrong number two. Try Braden Gallier, Lark. Thought that name sounded wrong. <laughs> yeah. Gallagher picked up a couple of yards on the play. Brings up a second down and eight. Yeah, they've got double coverage on London Smith up on the far end of the football field. Do you blame them? Absolutely not. I double, I double cover them the whole game. So that means somebody else has got to be open. Fake to Evans, passing the flat once again to Galahar. He sidesteps a couple of would-be tacklers and dives forward up to the 45-yard line, a yard shy of the first down. Xavier Pension, number 18, on the tackle. Nice, nice run after catch by Galahar. The third down and one from the 45. Let's again, look to the sideline for the play. 
Quick hitter out to Galahar. He has it the first down up to the 50 where he's gang tackled after making the catch. Jaden oh, Vizio with the tackle. Yeah, Galahar is going to be his, could be his go-to guy tonight because it's single coverage for him and, and Galahar can take him. He's just, got a ton of speed. I'll say it's just a four yard gain to the 49. Confusion between the quarterback and the running back as to where the position. Bynum looking to throw deep. Now decides to throw back and it's intercepted. That was a no-no. Jackson, Jackson Cloudus. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Never throw back across your body like that, even though somebody looks open. Because that's what happens. Doing what he could to try to make something happen, trying to get that to Ladarius Evans. That turnover is going to give the ball to the Wildcats at their own 41-yard line with 8 minutes and 43 seconds left to go in the first half. They're on top by a score 10 to 7. As he was rolling out there, if he had seen his short receiver that was about six yards right in front of him, he would have been, he would have been fine, but he, he just didn't see him. Lewis has two running backs in the backfield with him. Fumbles the football, picks it up, and he's going to be tackled. Little indecision between he and Harper as to who's going to have the football, and it's going to go back to the 39 for a two-yard loss. Joseph Cavallero wrapping him up immediately. So the Trojan defense has now got the Wildcats behind the chains. First time I can remember that happening in the contest. Slot receiver is Jaden Owens. Three receivers to the right. Fake the handoff to Harper, throw across the middle to Owens, but it's incomplete. He had him there, he just missed him, Lark. Trojan defense trying to overcome the interception here. And cause a three and out. It's third and 12 from the 39 in Wildcat territory. Clock stopped with 7.57 to go in the second quarter after the incompletion. Two receivers to each side. Lewis straight drop back now flush from the pocket. Pump fake, and now was able to throw it away somehow. Let's see if they call that grounding or if they're going to know. They say it's an incomplete pass, so a good job by Lewis just to get rid of that one. Yeah, Martinez was putting massive pressure on him, and then D.Q. Irwin had him before he finally got rid of the ball barely. Great defensive series by University, and that'll force uh, Elgin to punt the ball from their 39-yard line. Lewis is four of six passing right now for 48 yards, but a good job by the defense to help the offense overcome that turnover. Jawan Harris uh, back to receive this punt. Moss gets it away, tries to kick it away from Harris. Harris, though, will make the catch at the 22. Gets it about a 10-yard return to the 32-yard line. He's finally stopped by Darius Holiday, number seven. Well, the Trojans have the football with 7.37 left to go. In our first half, they trail by a score of 10 to 7. Twenty-nine yard net punt. We'll start this drive at the 33 yard line. London Smith will go wide to the right side as the lone receiver there. Galahar, the wide receiver to the near side. Joined there by Zachariah Ruiz. Fake the handoff, Bynum keeps, tries to read a couple of blocks and then tucks under the tackle and gets it up to the 36 yard line for a gain of three. To Varian Wright in on the tackle number 24. Second 
Second and seven. Tight end to the left of the formation. Bynum checks the sideline once again for the play. Throws quickly in the flat. Gets a little help on a, from Galahar to get a little freedom there as Joseph Foster gains up to the 40, make that the 39 yard line for another gain of three. Darius Holiday, number seven in on the tackle. Third down and four facing the Trojans here. Send London Smith in motion. Fake the handoff. Bynum keeps looking for the first down. Has it and more as he gets up to the 45-yard line for a gain of six in the first down. Nice piece of running by the quarterback. Darius Holiday again on the tackle number seven. You know, about a seven-minute drive here capped off by a score. You go to the locker room with a halftime lead. That would be kind of nice for the university offense. That was some good motion they finally put into their offensive scheme here in the first quarter, I mean, in the first half. Edwin Eccles is the flanker to the right side of the offensive line. They send Foster in motion, but handed off to Ladarius Evans. Gets a block from Eccles on the side. Gets away from a would-be tackler and into Wildcat territory and finally out of bounds at about the 34-yard line. And that's why he's the district's leading rusher so far this year. He is a tough runner. They got him all the way down to the 20, oh, I'm sorry, the 34-yard line is where he went out of bounds. 21-yard pickup on the play. Trips to the right, handoff though to Evans. Bouncing it around the left side, trying to turn the corner and be forced out of bounds. Still inside the 30. Well, right at the 30-yard line is where they're going to mark it, a four-yard gain for Evans. Nice tackle by number 29, Jackson Cloudus. And we, had and we got a flag. Question on the play. Illegal shift. Offense, number one, five yards, previous spot. First down. London Smith apparently did something incorrect. Maybe he was already moving toward the line of scrimmage. So it'll repeat second down, but now it's second and 15. Ball back to the 39-yard line. Bynum with the keep. Cuts inside a would-be tackler and takes it all the way down to the 31. Finally stopped by Omar Palacios. Bynum is a shifty little runner. Well, we're seeing a little bit more running out of him tonight than we've seen previously during the season. Picked up seven on that play down to the 32. Brings up a second down and eight. Well, Elgin evidently is trying to double cover university's best receiver, London Smith. Bynum, five carries for 32 yards. Hands it off to Evans. Evans trying to turn it upfield. Takes it down close to the 25. They'll get him to the 27 is where they'll put him down after a five-yard gain and bring up third down about three. Matthew Clear wrapping him up. Just two down territory for University here. Absolutely. Just trying to keep this drive alive. It started with 7.37 left to go. Clock ticking with 4.15 left in the first half of play. Play clock is at 10 as they get the play in. Hand off to Evans straight ahead. He's going to be very close to the first down. I think they're going to mark it at the 25. He needs to get to the 24. Jackson Cloudus stopped him in his tracks there. Well, fourth and one. 
from the 25, and they've got it. Once again, it's Evans going straight ahead. I like that play call. 24, Tiberian right with the tackle, but they went on an extremely quick count. Picked up five yards down to the 20. Now that was a play that was probably already called in practice. If we got fourth and one and they're into the field, this is the play we're running. Bynum looking to throw, passes into the flat. It's wide open to Eccles. And Eccles will take it inside the five yard line. Miguel Nunez and Xavier Pension. Very nice play call there. He had two receivers wide open. Picked up 17 on the play, brings up first and goal at the three. Good job of blocking by that offensive line in this drive. From the center, Rangel to the guards, Navarro and Willis, and the tackles, Dowling and Cervantes, doing their job and straight ahead running is Evans into the end zone for the touchdown. But Darius Evans gives the Trojans their first lead of the game. For Evans, his fourth rushing touchdown of the year. Okay, Monreal will be kicking the extra point. Number 11, Savoy Nichols will be holding. Kick on its way, and it is good. Two minutes, 51 seconds left to go in our first quarter. The University Trojans have their first lead of the night. They're on top of the Elgin Wildcats by a score of 14 to 10. Outstanding offensive series there by University. As Elgin is forcing University to change their patterns up a little bit tonight uh, offensively, going to have to go to their second, third, and fourth receivers as they are they're, they're double covering London Smith. They're trying to take him out of the game. But you do have Ladarius Evans, like I say, you're the leading rusher here in the district, and uh, he, he will make you pay for it when you're one guy short in the box. They traveled the 67 yards in 10 plays and took four minutes and 46 seconds off of the second quarter clock to grab the lead by four at 14 to 10. Well, you can't discount what the defense did after the interception, stopping the Wildcats and forcing a punt. And after that punt, the offense does its job and drives in for the go-ahead score. Now the defense going to go to work and see if they can't hold on to that lead through intermission. Paul Monreal to kick the ball. You got Knowles, Jefferson, and Owens deep for Elgin. Kick popped up and taken at the 23-yard line. A good return for Owens. Eccles trying to work him out of bounds, and they finally do. It was Eccles and Juwan Harris, the only two Trojans that had a chance, and the special teams come through for the Wildcats here. There you see it on the replay. As Jalen Owens takes it in and then takes it across the field, picks up the wall, and gives the Wildcats excellent field position at the University 27-yard line. Excellent kickoff return by Elgin to put themselves in great position to score here right before halftime. Well, even at worst, they're probably in field goal position already. Absolutely, they are. We saw them kick at least 50 yarders here before the game started. Quarterback Nathan Lewis takes the snap with just a quarterback run, picks up a wall of blockers, gets it inside the 20, and finally twirled out of bounds at about the 15. Picked up a first down on the play with 12 yards. Kirkland, number 31, finally forcing them out. Lewis, ninth carry for 82 yards and a touchdown so far. For the Wildcats. He's a tough runner, 6'1", 181 pounder. He is a senior. 
Part of a team that went seven and four a year ago. Once again, Lewis on the keep. Spins out of a couple of tackles and fights his way up to the 10 yard line. Marquez and Harris bringing him down. Marquez was holding on to him and finally got some help from Juwan Harris, number three. Both teams have their full complement of timeouts left here in the first half. Wildcats not choosing to ask for a timeout yet as we're under two minutes left to go in the third quarter. And Elgin trails by a score of 14 to 10. Take the handoff to Jefferson. Lewis once again with the keep. He's inside the five, fights his way for the end zone and gets in for the touchdown. Joaquin Martinez had a hold of him. Could not bring him down. He had him wrapped up too high on the shoulders. Second TD of the night for Nathan Lewis. Gives the lead back to the Wildcats. They take advantage of the special team's punt return, traveling 27 yards in just three plays to recapture the lead. Moss will be kicking the extra point. Lewis will be holding. That's what good teams do, you know, when you take advantage of those opportunities to uh, make the other team pay for it when you have a short field. Kick is good. Minute 39 left to go in our second quarter. And the Elgin Wildcats back on top of the University Trojans by a score of 17 to 14. Again, this tops off the 10-yard or the 27-yard drive, the 10-yard run by Lewis. You see the determination and the stretch to get into the end zone to get his second touchdown of the night. They went that 27 yards in three plays and took a minute 12 to get on the scoreboard. So a great answer back, not just by their offense, but by Nathan Lewis. Lewis now has carried the ball 11 times for 92 yards here in this first half and has scored both touchdowns. Yeah, that's, he came into this game averaging 75 yards on the ground per game. Moss will be kicking off. I would dare say they will probably kick this one this time instead of trying to fake it. They try to onside kick earlier and Eccles was on top of that. Yeah, we got Perez and Gallahar deep for University on their 10 yard line. Eccles is right there in the middle waiting for that onside kick if it should come to him. He's right there at the 50 on the near hash mark. They do kick it deep. This one's gonna go out of the end zone and the Trojans will take over at their own 25 yard line. 75 yards away from taking a lead into the locker room. They do have all three timeouts and they do have an offense that can strike quick. They've got the weapons. London Smith will go to the far side along with Joseph Foster. Gallagher, the only receiver to the left of the formation. Eccles in as the flanker. We'll go to the right side of the offensive line. Hand it off to Evans. Evans is immediately hit. Gonna be dropped for about a two yard loss back to the 18, but there's a flag on the play. Holding. Holding, offense, offense. Number, number seven, seven. Ten, 10 yards, previous, previous spot, spot. First, down. first down. So the holding penalty gonna move it back, make it first and 20 at the 15. A little tougher go for the Trojan offense now with a minute 33 left to go in the first half.
Pass complete to Galahar at the 20. He gets out of bounds at the 25. Pick up a 10 on the play. Get that penalty yardage back. They are giving Galahar plenty of room by the quarterback. He's playing off 10 yards. That plays there. If that's what they're, they're giving you, that's what you take. And you've got double coverage on London Smith at the top of your screen, one low, one high. Find him looking to pass that way, finds Smith partially open at the 50-yard line, but overthrows him a hair. So third and 10 with a minute 11 left to go. Just maybe overthrew that one a little bit. And checking the sideline with offense coordinator Thomas Draper. Adam rolling to his left, trying to square up the shoulders. Now throws and complete to Galahar at the 35-yard line. That's right there at the yard to gain for a first down. Yeah, that should be a first down. It is. Nice job of getting the reception by Galahar and then falling out of bounds with it, keeping the feet in. With a minute four to go, that saves the timeouts. You got, still got three on the board. Two-minute offense here for the University Trojans. Trying to possibly get into field goal range for at least a tie ball game at halftime, if not get the touchdown to take the lead. Got 64 seconds to work in. Find him. Trying to get set, now throws, far sideline incomplete. Trying to get that to London Smith, but again, he's double covered over there. We've got a flag down on the 32-yard line. Brad Strickland gonna tell us about it. Holding, holding. Offense, Offense, number 54, 10 yards, 10 yards spot. First down. Okay. Well, they overcame a first and 20 a moment ago. So move it back to the 25. Two steps forward, one step back. I think Bynum, he got shook up a little bit on that tackle. And there was no roughing the passer. Trojans calmly come up to the line of scrimmage. They hand it off to Evans. Evans is hit in the backfield, but keeps his feet and backs his way up to the 28-yard line. Gain of only three on the play. Hutron, number 10 on the tackle. And they're not going to call a timeout. They're going to let the clock roll. He's up a second and 17 at the 28. Clock under 30 seconds left. Galahar goes in motion, puts three receivers on that side. A keep by Bynum will get it up to the 33-yard line. Dennis Levine, number 55, tripping him up. If he hadn't have tripped him up, he had a lot of daylight in front of him. Trojans do call a timeout here, or did they? No, nope, they're just going to go to the locker room. And... Trail by three points at the half. 24 minutes in, it's Elgin 17 and University 14. Stay tuned, our halftime activities coming up in a moment. Trojan Band. The highlighters are led by Officer Angel Noble, and this week's highlighter of the week is Senior Lexi McFall. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stepping UHS highlighters. highlighters. Are you ready to be entertained? Please get on your feet and cheer for the greatest and most talented band in the land, showing out in style and guaranteed to make you smile, the mighty Trojan Martin Band. The Georgia Marching Band is proud to present Habanera from our Carmen and Seville Marching Band. This year's drum majors are Senior Osmar Casares, Assistant Drum Majors Liliana Olvera, and Angel de la Cruz. Drum majors, is your band ready? Ladies and gentlemen, the mighty Trojan Marching Band.
Hope you enjoyed our halftime activities. About to get the third quarter underway here at Waco ISD Stadium with the Elgin Wildcats on top of the University Trojans by a score of 17 to 14. First half stats slightly in favor of Elgin, though University has one more first down, nine to eight. In total offense, the Trojans have won 27 plays for 166 yards. Elgin, 24 plays for 158 yards. Trojans have run the ball 15 times for 95 yards. Elgin, 18 times for 110. University passing 9 of 12 for 71 yards. Elgin just 4 of 6 for 48 yards. There's been one turnover in the game. That was an interception thrown by University. Fairly penalty free. You would hope that it would be that way this late in the season. University penalized four times for 30 yards. Elgin two times for 10 yards. Time of possession fairly even. The Trojans have had it for 12 minutes and 6 seconds. Elgin, Elgin 11 minutes and 54 seconds. Leading rusher in the game is the Elgin quarterback, Nathan Lewis. 11 carries for 92 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Ladarius Evans has carried the ball nine times for 58 yards. He has a touchdown as well as Cade Bynum for the University Trojans. Trojans get the ball to start our second half of play, trailing by three. Deep kick, going to get into the end zone. And it'll be down in the end zone and brought out to the 25. Now, what do the Trojans need to do to win this one from this point? They've just got to be patient on this on this series right here. They are giving them plenty of space away from London Smith that they want to pass the ball to Golahar. He's got plenty of space to make six, seven-yard gains. And if Ladarius Evans breaks one up the middle, they don't have a safety that is in position because they are leaning heavily to to cover London Smith on the right side. Just need to do the old Hank Stram. Just matriculate down the field. Cade Bynum, the quarterback, hands it off to Evans coming around the left corner. Will step out of bounds when he gets it up to the 29-yard line for a gain of four. Tavarian right forcing him out of bounds. Evans just using his speed to get around the corner there. And around Jackson Cloudus to get around that corner. Second and six from the 29. Malahar goes in motion. Evans up the middle. Has first down yardage as he gets across the 35 to the 36. Matthew Clear finally bringing him down, number 45. Just a nice hole opened up on that offensive line by Rangel, Navarro, Willis, Dowling, and Cervantes. First and 10 from the 36. Bad snap. Bynum trying to make something out of it. Now we got a flag thrown behind the line of scrimmage. Normally where we see holding is he's able to only get a yard out of it after the bad snap. Just a little off to one side. Offense, number 58, 10 yards previous spot. First down. Gilberto Dowling called for the holding penalty. They had a couple of first and 20s late in the first half and were able to overcome them both. Takes it back to the 24 yard line. Look to the sideline to see if they change the play with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Make the handoff, now throws in the flat, and it's in and out of the hands on the far side, trying to get that out to Foster. That brings up a second down and 20. Some of that pressure is uh, affecting Bynum just a little bit tonight as they get a good push up against this university line. Head coach K. Ron Johnson, along with offensive coordinator Thomas Draper, deciding on a play. Six seconds on the play clock. 
Get the snap off in time. Plenty of time for Bynum, unloads across the middle, and it's a little behind his intended target, trying to get that into Foster across the middle. To Varian Wright, defending on the play. He had London Smith open on that pattern earlier in the game and couldn't get to him. This one's just a little behind him. So third and 20. Smith, the wide receiver to the right. Alahar, the wide receiver to the near side. Eccles will be the flanker moving to the right side of the formation. Bynum looking to pass, has time, throws to the near sideline to Galahar. If he can get to it, it's a little out of his reach. Well, they'll remember that play uh, later on in this quarter, maybe even the fourth quarter. Like I said, I thought Galahar could take the defensive back against Elgin, and he had him beat, just barely, barely overthrew him. Monreal is going to be back to punt the ball from his 25-yard line. Nine of 15 passing for Cade Bynum. 71 yards with one interception. It starts off the third quarter with three consecutive incomplete passes. Punt is away and will roll along the university sideline all the way down to the 37 yard line. 10 minutes and 28 seconds left to go third quarter. And the Wildcats of Elgin get the ball for the first time in the second half with a lead of 17 to 14. 38 yards on the punt by Monreal. Mark it at the 37. And the Elgin end of the field. Elgin's offensive line has done a good job tonight. The center is Obadiah Halliburton. The guards, Aiden Beckett and Joaquin Rodriguez. The tackles. Hunter Gibson and Joseph Stiggers. Quarterback Nathan Lewis, our leading rusher in the first half. Sends a man in motion, takes the snap, hands it off to that motion man. Going around the left side is Ayer Newells. Juan Harris wrapping him up from the safety position, but not until they have a first down. All the way out to the 48, a pickup of 11 on the play. Brings up a first and 10. Pass in the far flat. That's complete out to, that's number 15. That's Blake Thames. That's first completion to him tonight. We've got London Smith playing defensive cornerback. I believe it's his first appearance in the game so far this tonight. Get into university territory to the 47 with that pickup of five. Brings up a second down and five. They look to the sideline. Their head coach, Heath Clausen. Now put two running backs in the backfield with Lewis. Lewis hands it off to the tailback. Running room around the right side. Nice fight to get extra yards. That is Gary Jefferson, Jr., a sophomore, just 5'8", 152 pounds, but shows some tough running there. Henderson and Harris finally were able to stop him, but not after a not till they got a first down. Down to the 37, a 10 yard pickup. Second first down in the drive. Three receivers to the left. Handed off to the running back in the backfield. He's going to be dropped immediately. That's Harper. Joseph, Caball yeah, Joseph Caballero on that. He, he, Marquez stunted, and Joseph came right behind him and just went right through the alley there and cleaned his clock. Lost a yard on the play for Harper. Brings up second down and 11. Trojan defense trying to stiffen before the Wildcats can move into field goal range. Take the handoff to Harper. Lewis dives over right guard. Gets it down to the 35. Juwan Harris on the tackle. Mark that at the 35. A gain of three on the play. Third and eight at the University 35. Big play for the University defense here. 
Two receivers to each side. Lewis will run with it. Gets it up past the first down inside the 25 before he's finally gang tackled. A little scrum trying to keep the play going. We just need to get an official's whistle to end the play, and they're going to mark it at the 23. Armani Franklin was the initial university defender to grab a hold of the quarterback, but not until he had a first down. A gain of 10 on the play for Lewis. Back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Now they look to the sideline. Their offensive coordinator, Richard Lucero. Out of a, a reverse, University has it smelled out. Trying to get around the corner is Nellis, and he's going to be brought down. Arma Excellent play. Yeah, Armani Franklin wasn't pulled at all, held on for dear life, and finally brought him down. I think maybe he saw that on film sometime. I know he did. Back to the 25, a loss of two. Here's second down and 12. Handoff goes to Foster, going around the right side. Excuse me, that's Jefferson, Gary Jefferson. Micah Henderson on the tackle. Takes it down to the 19 for a gain of six on the play. Going to bring up third down and six. Have to get the ball to the 12-yard line. I make it seven then, third and seven. Lone receiver to the right. Lewis going to take the football and run with it and trips as he gets to the 20-yard line. He's going to end up losing a yard on the play. DQ Irwin making sure he didn't get any more. But, yeah, he tripped up on his own feet. That will bring in their field goal kicker, number six. Peyton Moss. The distance will be no problem for him. Just be a matter if he can get it through or not. Wind has died down here at Waco ISD Stadium. So it'll be a 37-yard attempt for Peyton Moss. Out of the hold of Nathan Lewis. Ball down, kick on its way. It's got the distance, and it is good. His second field goal of the night. Ups the lead for the Wildcats to 20-14 to with five minutes and three seconds left to go in the third quarter. Excellent drive by Elgin. Started to see some hands on the hips of the uh, University of Defenders on those last two or three plays, but they did uh, bow up and hold them to a field goal, and it's still a one-score game. It's up to the offense now to take this ball and drive it down the field, try to take the lead. That drive went 43 yards in 10 plays. Took over five minutes, 5.35. On that drive. We've got Gallahar and Carlos Perez, deep in university. Peyton Moss's last two kicks, kickoffs are going all the way into the end zone. Highly unlikely they're going to return it. Well, Moss is definitely a weapon on special teams for the Wildcats. Special teams was the downfall for the University Trojans when they went to Pflugerville when turnovers allowed Pflugerville to score the first nine points of the game on field goals. That was basically the difference in the game. Moss will kick it deep into the end zone. University will take over at the 25. He is by far the best kicker we have seen this year. I'll give him that vote myself. 
Trojan offense needs to get something going here and answer the field goal. Got to stay away from penalties too so they can keep the offensive uh, offense moving forward. Yeah, they were doing pretty well in the first possession of the second half before a holding penalty sent them back. Two receivers to the right, one to the left. Bynum looking to pass. Will not be able to get rid of it. He gets out of bounds. He'll get a couple of yards out of it to the 27. Forced out by number 29, Jackson Cloudus. Looks like they had double coverage on Gallagher that time. They did. So now they're trying to take away Gallagher. Does that leave London Smith open? He's in the slot on the right side. Normally we see him as the wide receiver to the right of the formation, but he's got probably triple coverage where he is. The handoff, though, goes to Ladarius Evans up the middle, and he'll have first down yardage all the way down to the 36-yard line. Darius Holiday, number seven, the linebacker on the tackle. Evans just found a hole over the left side, over the right side, and just took it for nine yards for the first down. I like the change where they put London in the slot position, though. Give Elgin a different look. Evans takes the handoff. There we go. through a couple of tackles. Up the middle of the field goes Evans. He's into Wildcat territory and all the way down to the 44-yard line. Xavier Pynchon. 22 yards for Evans on the carry. Darius has now carried 13 times and hit the 100-yard mark for the night. Fourth time this year that Ladarius Evans has gotten to that 100-yard mark. He started off the season with an outstanding game against Robinson, 44 carries for 265 yards. He has the ball again, bounces it around the outside, that cuts it back inside and gets it inside the 40 to the 39 for a five-yard pickup. Well, him and Darius Holiday have met each other several times here tonight. And a nice tackle by number seven. It's 44 carries for Evans against Robinson as the Third most carries by any running back in the state of Texas this season in a single game. Galahar, the wide receiver to the left. London Smith in the slot on the right. Carlos Perez, the other receiver. Bynum looking that way, He's looking down the middle of the field. He's got him open, but can't get the ball to him. He will be sacked. Apparently, the Passing lane was closed down. He couldn't see London Smith that was open down the middle of the field. Holiday with a nice tackle on Bynum. Right now is when he could have let loose with it, but just couldn't see him. And the sack will move the ball back to the 43 yard line. A loss of four on the play. Comes up a third and nine. Boy, all the university fans saw that he was open and everybody was wishing that he could get that pass off. Bynum rolling left, now throws underneath. It's complete across the 30. He's down gone. the sideline. That is Edwin Eccles, and he gets into the end zone for the touchdown. Nice offensive play. Great run. Now, according to the statistics I have, easy for me to say, that is the first catch of the year for Eccles. Two of them tonight, okay? And then this is first, his touchdown of the year. Monreal back to try the extra point. 43 yards on the TD, pitch and catch. Whoever that is is offside. Point after is said to be no good. I don't see a flag. He was offside big time, and he also rubbed the kicker, but no call. I'm shocked that they uh, missed that because he was definitely all sides. So the point after no good, and we're all tied up at 20 apiece. I think the coach is going to go down there and talk to the. Here's a replay of the touchdown pass. Bynum just dumps it to Eccles. He gets a block from London Smith, who takes out two would-be tacklers, and then Eccles gets a nice downfield block from Braden Gallagher. 
and gets it into the end zone. Six plays to cover the 75 yards. A minute 48 left to go in the third quarter, and we're all tied up. Took them three minutes and 15 seconds to go that 75 yards in six plays. This has been an absolute barn burner so far. It was a great response by the university defense, so to come back and tie this ball game up. Monreal will be kicking off for university. Number 14 for Elgin. Gary Jefferson Jr. is the deep here on the near side, deep receiver, and then number five, Zaire Noels, both on their 15-yard line. Gonna pop it up to the near side. Pick it in once again by Owens. He had a nice return earlier in the game. Only gonna get this one up to the 22 yard line though. Brought down by number 18 for University Derek Thomas. Elgin has the ball at their own 23 yard line. A minute 40 left to go in the third quarter in a game that's all tied up at 20 apiece. Elijah Chairs, Cameron Kendall, and Edgar Marquez in the defensive line there for University to start this uh, series. Lewis has Harper in the backfield with him for this series of downs, or at least to start it. There's a false start there by the running back. That'll move him back five if the officials saw the same thing I saw. Brad Strickland will tell us about it. Offside, defense, five-yard penalty. First down. Well, I saw the running back move. I didn't see anybody in the offensive line or defensive line move, but it's going to be first and five up to the 28. Make the handoff to Harper. Lewis keeps, goes over the left side, and is brought down when he gets to the 30 for a gain of just two. Kamari and Kendall wrapping him up on the tackle. Eighth carry of the night for Lewis. Handoff goes to Harper. Harper will get it up to maybe the 32 yard line for a pickup of two. Marquez and Franklin wrapping them up. 31. DQ Irwin coming in. Replacing Devontre Kirkland. Gonna put an extra defensive lineman in on this third and one play. Going under center is Lewis. I have every reason to believe he's just going to take the snap, go straight ahead, but he turns and he hands it off to the tailback. That's Jefferson, and Jefferson will get the first down. Joseph Caballero tackling him, but not until he got a first down. Move it out to the 36 for a gain of four. And continues to drive for Elgin. But that will be our final play of the third quarter. I do believe they get the snap off at the buzzer. Lewis will be able to run with the football, avoid tacklers, and gets about six, six yards out of it. Lewis waited till the last second, was ticking off the third quarter clock before he took the snap and picks up six yards to bring up a second down and four to take us to the fourth quarter. Now we have this special presentation. 
Hi, my name is Lena Ortiz and I'm the principal here at Cesar Chavez Middle School. And I wanna to talk today a little bit about one of our initiatives that we have going on, uh, that it's an acknowledgement system that we have for our students called SOAR Awards. So our core values here at Cesar Chavez are safety, ownership, achievement, and respect. So every week we ask that our teachers highlight two students from their class that um, display any one of those four core values. And so every Friday we call out those students and they receive a gift bag. And so for us, it's something important to make sure that we recognize all those qualities in our students because everything we do here uh, centers around those core values. Ms. Doyle nominated me. I'm proud that I had to, I helped her. Whatever she needed to be done, I was there for her. Um, it makes me feel really good because I've been really trying to work towards my grades and make sure that my academics are good, having all A's and B's and passing all my classes. So it's, it feels good to know that my teachers and my principal um, notice those things. Again, we'd like to remind our Special message the from the Cesar Chavez Middle School there. Well, 12 minutes for a victory. We're all tied up at 20 apiece. Wildcats facing a second and four at their own 43. Lewis rolling to his right, looking to pass under pressure, will go down and sack for a huge loss back at about the 33-yard line. Minus nine on the play. Franklin with, with the initial contact, forcing them out. Great so, defensive effort there by University. One of the few times I can think that Lewis has had a loss tonight. This 16th time he's had the football in his hand to gain yards. He has 101 yards and two touchdowns. Third and 13. Lewis, quick drop, throws in the flat. Complete. Out to Jonathan Richard. Oh, excuse me, that's 19, Blake Courtney. Micah Henderson on the tackle. Nice third down conversion by Elgin. Pick up the first down. All the way out to the 47 yard line. They needed 13, they got 14. Got London Smith as a cornerback up on the far side. Lewis pitches in the flat to the near side of Newells. Newells able to get to the sideline, will be pulled out of bounds at the 43 and Waco and University's into the field. Travion to great, forcing them out. They've been using, this, using the short pass to advance the ball down the field now. Another 10 yard pickup and another first down for the Wildcats. This is very reminiscent of last year's game between these two teams. Went down to the wire. Newell's in the slot on the right. Quarterback keeper around the right side. Lewis cuts it back inside, gets it inside the 35 before he finally goes down at the 34-yard line. A pickup of nine on the play for Lewis. Jawan Harris finally bringing him down after a couple guys tried to tackle him at the shoulders and he just kept going. He is a tough runner. Ball's at the 34 yard line. Second down and one. Unbalanced line to the left, they pitch it that way. Jefferson cuts back against the grain into the open for a moment. Gets it inside the 25 down to the 23. A gain of 12 on the play, or 11 on the play for Jefferson. Micah Henderson and London Smith wrapping them up. University's got a little fatigue going on out there on the, on the defensive side of the ball right now. The 11, 11th play of the drive. DQ Irwin coming into the line. Give him four linemen here. Again, unbalanced line to the left. Fake the pitch, looking to pass in the flat. It is complete to Darius Holiday. 
He's listed as a linebacker, but he's in on that play to get a pass for the first time tonight. Caballero putting some pressure on Lewis. London Smith with the tackle. Got it down to the 21, just a two-yard pickup. Brings up second down and eight. And that is Holiday's first reception of the year. Harper takes the handoff, is hit when he gets to the line of scrimmage and will get no gain out of the play. Matter of fact, he might lose a yard. Martinez met him right at the line of scrimmage. Just flat out stopped him. Bring up a third and nine from the 22. Quickly back up to the line of scrimmage. Wildcats may be looking for an offside penalty there. Unable to get it. And off to Harper. Dances through a hole on the left side. Shoestring tackle. He'll take it down to the 17. Linebacker Martinez, Joaquin Martinez, holding on for dear life, but that's going to bring a fourth down. They're probably going to kick a field goal. Yep. Picked up five on the play, brings up fourth and four. No, he's going to go for it. When you got a field goal kicker that's as long and as accurate as he has, I'm not sure why he's not. Now, he does have all his timeouts he may be discussing it but there's eight seconds left on the play clock as they go for it on fourth and four in university territory ball is dropped did they call, they a, timeout? call a timeout yeah they called a timeout before the snap, before the snap. Yeah. Timeout. Timeout. kind of knew that was coming didn't we they've had the ball nearly seven minutes on this drive yeah they started with a minute 48 left in the third quarter. So you add that to the 407. That's five minutes and 55 seconds they've had it. It's been an impressive drive. Been able to run the ball, a couple, two or three short passes that gone for 10 yards, 10 or 13 yards. Well balanced attack by Elgin. This will be play number 13 of the drive, which started back at the Wildcat 23-yard line. The University defense, defensive coordinator Charles Foster trying to come up with a plan to stop Elgin if they decide to go for it here on fourth and four, or whether or not head coach Heath Clausen decides to kick the field goal and get the lead of at least three points. Well, you've got both London Smith and uh... – Braden Gallahar going to be at the cornerbacks. Well, that's a couple of guys that know what receivers are thinking because they are receivers as well. They send two to the right, lone receiver to the near side. Harper not in the backfield. Once again, they may be trying to get University to jump offside here. They do make the snap. Handoff goes to Jefferson. He didn't. And Jefferson's going to be held short. He got to the 15, and that's it. And number 14, that was Jefferson, and the Trojans have held. He got two yards out of it. Ball goes over on downs. And University takes over with 7.01 left to go in the game. And a contest that's tied at 20. That was an excellent fourth down defensive stand by University. They take over at their own 15 yard line. For sure, University has to, they've got to get some first downs regardless to give their defense a, a breather here. Evans takes the handoff, gets it out to the 17. 
Holiday tripping them up. Two. Number seven has been all over the field tonight for Elgin. Second and eight from the 17. London Smith in the slot to the left. Heckles moves as the flanker to the right. Evans follows Eccles block, still on his feet. It's it down to the 21 for a gain of four. Ogilio Hutron, number 10, making the tackle for Elgin. Third and four from the 21. Trojans back up to the line quickly. Adam asked for the snap, but that was just trying to fake out the defense. Pass in the flat is complete to Eccles. Eccles is going to be. It's going to be about a yard short, about I a think, yard shy, yeah. Wouldn't be stunned if he goes for it. He knows his defense is pretty gassed right now. They've. Got to get to the 25, pick up a new series of downs. Little riverboat gambler choice here. One thing you can't do is get a penalty. You've got to get it to the 25. They marked it at the 23, so it's fourth and two. And off, not going to get there. Evans unable to get there. No gain on the play. Ball turned over on downs. A couple of coaches that are taking the gamble here. I think this is the biggest, bigger gamble here. Going forward in your own end of the field and turning the ball over at your own 23 yard line. Well, that's someone showing some confidence in your offensive line to get the job done. And a two minute drive for University ends up with no points. And no first downs. 5.01 left to go. Game tied at 20. Lewis will option himself and only get a no gain on the play. 57 Sebastian Cervantes, one of many down there making the tackle on Lewis. He's got a couple of defenses that have really cinched it up here. Trying to hold the other team. Jefferson's the running back. Lewis gives it to Jefferson. Jefferson over the left side. Down to the 20, and that's about it. Marquez Caballero in on the tackle. Along with 21, four, Franklin. Giving four to the 19. Brings up third and six. Another big play here for the university defense. You've got to know what number one might have in his mind. He is their tough runner. He's probably going to try to get it on his own. He on the option play, pitches it. The ball's on the ground and no gain on the play as Jefferson just has to fall on it. They don't run that option much. This one doesn't come up with any yardage. And now they're going to go with that field goal attempt. Peyton Moss trying a 36-yarder. This is hit on a field goal earlier of the 38 yards. At the distance, and it is good. Three minutes and three seconds left to go in the contest, and Elgin recaptures the lead. They're up 23 to 20. Un University, you know, they it's pretty obvious what they've got to do. They've got to drive the length of the field here because kicker's going to kick it deep on them. They got all their timeouts. There's plenty of time to move the ball down the field, so they shouldn't be in any big hurry. Or panic, you know, or no panic mode, just 
operate your offense and see what happens. Elgin getting the ball on downs at the University 23, only able to move four yards in the four plays and kick the 36-yard field goal. Took a minute and 58 seconds to do that and grab the lead again at 23 to 20. Help, help me, Hal, has, has University had the lead in this game at any time? No, they have not. Okay. No, they did. They had it uh, 14 to 10. 14 to 10. There that we go. was short-lived. Yeah. They had the lead for just over a minute. Well, it doesn't matter what, how many times you have the lead during the game as long as you have it when that scoreboard ends 0-0-0. Zero, zero, zero. Peyton Moss will kick it off for Elgin. Gallagher and Perez are deep for University. This is going to be returnable for Perez. Gets it to the 15, and that's about it. Maybe up to the 18-yard line. Good downfield coverage by the Elgin. So 82 yards away from a victory for the University Trojans with under three minutes to go in the game. Trojans trying to improve to five and two on the year and two and one in district play and stay in the hunt for a postseason berth. Elgin trying to get even on the year at four and four and also even their district record at two and two. Cade Bynum, the quarterback, has Ladarius Evans in the backfield with him. Fakes the handoff. Bynum gets away from a would-be tackler. Upfield, still looking maybe to pass the ball, and now gets forced out of bounds for no gain. Derek Thomas pushing him out of bounds. He kept looking for somebody to get open for at least a short pass, but just could not deliver it. Second down and 10. Well, they're going to give him a one yard gain on that. To the 19. Evans gets loose. Will get out of bounds when he gets to the 35 yard line. Pick up a 14 for Ladarius Evans and a first down for University. Evans again gets a lead block from Eccles, gets it around the corner and cuts it back upfield and finally falls at the boundary at the 44-yard line. That's a pickup of nine on the play. Magnuson, number 22, along with several other Elgin defenders on the tackle. Darius Evans earning his salt here. He's carried the ball now 19 times for 134 yards and a touchdown. Gets the handoff once again over the left side. He'll bury his head and get it up to the 49-yard line for a five-yard game. Darius Holiday, number seven, in on the tackle along with number eight, Anthony Alvarez. Picked up the second first down of the drive. Clock under two minutes to go. University still has all three timeouts. They try to get in position to take a last second win here. Bynum was looking to pass, but we have a flag on the play. Let's go. Offense, number two, five yard penalty. First down. Gallagher gets tagged for the penalty. Lose it back five yards, back to the 44 yard line. Checking the sideline for the play. The clock is back in motion now after the penalty. Bynum handles the snap. Forced to roll to his left. He's going to keep it and run with the football. And will take it out of bounds at the 46-yard line in the Wildcats into the field. Nodwin Bailey forcing 
quarterback out after a nice game. Picked up 10 yards on the play. Brings up a second down and five. Eighty three seconds to go. Trojans trail by three at twenty three to twenty. Play clock under ten now. Bynum takes the snap. We'll heave it downfield for Galahar. Excuse me, that's for trying to get that out to Carlos Perez and just a little overthrown. See him just heave it and hope for the best. Perez unable to get under it. Third down and five at the Wildcat 46. London Smith in the slot on the right side. Galahar, the outside receiver to the right. Bynum fakes the handoff, going to be tackled from behind. Back to the 49-yard line, a loss of three on the play. Holiday again, number seven on the tackle. Holiday just comes untouched, and University going to call their first timeout with 70 seconds left to play. Somebody didn't block the backside on that one. Not at all. Four down and seven. Yeah, that holiday is a six foot one, 205 pounder, and he has been all over the place in the second half for Elgin, making play after play. He also made a play on offense for the Wildcats. Well, University's just got to decide what's their best play to get eight yards, keep this drive going, because this is the ball game. They've got to have it to at least have, even have a chance to tie or take or win the game. Standings in the district going into the night. Rouse is 2-0. and oh. Belton and Chaparral 2-1. and one. University at 1-1. One and one. Elgin at 1-2 and two, as along with Pflugerville. And Pflugerville Conley is at 0-2. Oh this is a big win for either one of these teams in positioning for the postseason. Fourth and seven. Ball game on the line here. Fake the handoff once again. Holiday forces him out of the pocket. There goes Bynum. He has running room inside the 30 to the 25 and out of bounds at the 25 yard line in the Wildcats into the field. A great clutch run by Cade Bynum. Huge hole opened up on that right hand side. Some misdirection. Bynum. Just with got great speed. 26 yards on the play. Biggest gainer of the night for Cade Bynum. His 12th carry for 69 yards. He also has a touchdown. One minute exactly left on the scoreboard clock. Trojans in position to try to take this one in the last seconds. Bynum looking to his left, throws for grabs. And in and out of the hands of Galahar at the five. Great effort by Galahar trying to come back for that ball. Another, once again, great pressure from Holiday here. Forces him to just kind of throw it up in the air, hoping that Galahar could get to it. Second down and 10 with 55 seconds to go. Eccles in at the flanker. He is an extra receiver. Hand off to Evans. Evans around the right side into, uh, into the open, down to the 10, and out of bounds at the nine yard line. Brought down by Hutron, number 10, along with number eight, Alvarez. But another great run by Evans. 16 yards down to the nine, brings up a first and goal for the University Trojans. With 48 seconds left and a timeout called, I believe this has been called by the Wildcats. Sure enough, Elgin uses their first timeout. Two timeouts remaining for each team. The Trojans in position possibly to at least tie the game with a field goal, but I don't think they're going for the tie. I think they want the win. Absolutely. There's plenty of time. They've got two timeouts. They can get four plays regardless. Hopefully they don't need four plays. 
they can punch it in, but they've got uh, Elgin on their heels too right now. They're a little gas. They've got some hands on their uh, hips too. These are long. How many plays so far in this drive, roughly? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This will be the 11th play of the drive. Right. Late in the game, and you've got a good drive going. The other team's a little gassed also, so it's just uh, it's Wills now who's got the most willpower. Started back at the University 18 with 3.03 left in the contest. We're down the last 48 seconds, and University's at the Wildcat 9. Alahar puts in motion. Hand off to Evans up the middle. He's inside the 5 to the 4. Brought down by Holiday along with number 10, Hutron. Another five yards for Evans. Clock continues to roll with 30 seconds left. Evans has the football. He's down to the three. The third and goal from the three and a timeout called by University. Hutron number 10 on the tackle along with 55. University. Levine, Dennis Levine. 21 seconds left on the clock. University inside the five yard line. Definitely in field goal range now to tie the game. If they don't get into the end zone on this play, it's going to be decision time for that coaching staff. Do we go to overtime? Do we go for the win? Championship drive here, though, started at their 18-yard line, and they marched it all the way down the field in under three minutes to give themselves a chance to either tie or win the game. One timeout remains for Elgin. Trojans have two timeouts left to call with 21 seconds left on the scoreboard clock. Carlos Perez, the wide receiver to the left. London Smith, the receiver in the slot. Malahar, the wide receiver to the near side. Eccles is the flanker. Evans the running back. Bynum rolling, looking, corner of the end zone, overthrows Galahar. He had him too. He was open, but he was under a lot of duress. 17 seconds go now, and it's decision time for head coach K. Ron Johnson. Does he go for the tie? Does he go for the win? The decision is not made yet. 15 seconds left on the play clock. The decision is made. They're going for it. At least that's the way it looks, not unless they're going to let the play clock go down and call a timeout. Four, three, two, one. Snapped off in time, and there's a timeout called. Timeout called by University timeout, just before the snap. Final he said that's a final timeout. I don't agree. Clock says there's one left. Did they call that other timeout that we thought Elgin called? I think they did, Lark. Okay. Yeah, the scoreboard now says no timeouts remaining for University. So this is it. Do you improve your record to five and two on the year for the Trojans? Or even it up at four and four for the Elgin Wildcats. This is exactly the kind of game I expected to see tonight. Yeah, two even matched teams. Very competitive game. Cleanly played, hardly any turnovers. Fourth and goal facing the University Trojans. You got to figure Elgin's going to bring some heat. They're going to bring some backers, try to force him get rid of this ball quick uh, if, like they, if they decide to throw it. Holiday is on the right side of the defensive line. He's Bynum is going to run it in for the touchdown. Cade Bynum on a quarterback draw gets it in for the touchdown with 13 seconds left. Bynum's second touchdown of the night. On just a simple quarterback draw, takes it up the middle. 
And the Trojans take the lead for the second time in the game at 26 to three with the point after to come. Just a nice big hole there. Gutsy call by the head coach. Go for it. Montreal on to try to tack on the point after. Kick on its way, and it is good. 13 seconds remain in our contest. And the University Trojans have a four-point lead at 27 to 23. That four points makes a big difference in this contest, considering the field goal kicker that the Wildcats have. Absolutely, it does. 82-yard drive. How many? In, how many plays into that? 14 or 15? 14 plays in two minutes and 50 seconds to go. 82 yards. Well, University has the talent offensively to produce those kind of drives, but that's still clutch, a lot of pressure. Everything's got to go your way. Remember they had a fourth and seven here at the 50 yard line, made that on a big run by uh, Bynum to keep that possession going, so. Now don't forget earlier in the game, Aylan Owens on special teams had a really good return. He is the return man on the 20 yard line on the far side. University has not necessarily been keep kicking the ball deep. But if Monreal can kick one into the end zone, that would be the thing to do here. Of course, the Wildcats to go 75 yards in 13 seconds with just one timeout remaining. Now you got Owens, you got Newell, you got Thames back deep for Elgin. Kick gonna come to the near side and go out of bounds at the two, or at the three. So they'll bring it out to the 25 and it'll be marked at the 30. After the five yard walk off. 13 the seconds and they have one timeout left. They're gonna maximum three plays with that time. At least they avoided the return on the special teams. And kicking it deep and out of bounds. Now does Elgin, Elgin can decide to go ahead and make them re-kick. Re-kick out of bounds, kicking team. Ball was placed at the 30 yard. They're gonna, gonna take it at the 30 and play from there. Keep an eye out for their top receiver, Jefferson. Number 14 and also number five, Air Newells. Got to believe they're going to try to work the sidelines. London Smith is going to be a deep safety for the university defense. And don't forget the legs of Lewis. He's had a night running the football for the Wildcats. Drops straight back, looking deep. Tries to wind up, and he's going to be tackled for a loss. Marquez with the tackle. And Elgin will use their last timeout. Their third and final timeout. Seven seconds remain after the sack. It moves the ball back to the 28-yard line. A loss of two on the play. Second down and 12. It might as well be second down and forever. They basically have to score on this play. Now look for a gadget play. Hook and ladder. Absolutely. Absolutely. You're going to. 100 laterals, any, no, any number have, of things. Yeah, you had no choice. You've got to do some razzle-dazzle and hope for a miracle if you're Elgin. You can bet University will have two or three guys back on at least the 30-yard line in the University side of the play. What play does Heath Clawson have in his bag of tricks to try to get his team in the end zone? With seven seconds left, trailing by four. Trojans playing prevent, prevent. I mean, everybody's back. But that does open up the field quite a bit. Only three men rushing the football. 
takes a snap, throws it into the flat. Foster goes, or Jefferson goes out of bounds with it with two seconds left. Armani Franklin on the tackle out of the uh, sideline. Pickup of seven on the play. Third and five from the 35. Hail Mary, full of grace. Is the only prayer that the Wildcats have here. Rolling left, now stops, looks upfield, throws for the far side. It is incomplete, and that's the ball game. The University Trojans with a hard fought last second, 27-23 win at home over the Elgin Wildcats. Moved their record to five and two on the season, but more importantly, they're now two and one in district play and stay alive for a playoff spot. The Elgin Wildcats fall to three and five on the year, one and three in league play. And they have, it's gonna, their work's gonna be cut out for them to try to get into the postseason. We certainly thank you for joining us for football from Waco ISD Stadium tonight. For our entire crew from Trojans Productions. For my broadcast partner, Hal Harrison, our statistician, Paul Comer, I'm Mark Smith. Good night from Waco ISD Stadium.